Good morning, Central Church. On this heat wave Sunday, wherever you are, some have braved the humid conditions in the sanctuary. Some are at home watching uh, from a safe and cool distance. But we have gathered together today for worship in this time and this place and other places and other times as well. I think there's, um, there's a couple people that would scoot to the end of their half of the pew if you two want to sit in the end of another half of a pew. There's a couple folks who are by themselves in a pew. Of course, if you're watching the live stream, we welcome you to be here in person at 9.30 a.m. any Sunday morning. We're, our services are one service at 9.30 through Labor Day. Um, we'd welcome you to be here as well. If you come early, you can sit next to a fan. <laughs> we are still taking some precautions um, for keeping people safe in this uh, still COVID time. Our benchmark really is we are waiting for vaccines to be available to children 12 and under to, to really consider what post-COVID looks like. But since we're not there yet, we are still taking precautions. You are absolutely uh, welcome to, if you are vaccinated and comfortable, to take off your pews while you, uh, take off your masks, <laughs> take off your masks while you are in this, I don't do well with heat, y'all. Um, 
take off your masks while you're sitting, but uh, to keep, put them back on as you're moving around the sanctuary. Uh, we still have pews roped off for six foot distance. And um, as I said before, if there's one person sitting in a section and they go all the way to the end, then one or two people could sit at the end, the other end, that's still pretty far away. We are still uh, filling out the friendship pads, so find that brown pad near you, and um, if you'd leave us your contact information, that would be very helpful. There will be more changes, more relaxing of restrictions through the summer, uh, so stay tuned for that. Um, just, a little, just a little carrot for you. We're going to sing on July 25th. Uh, if you've seen the newsletter, that's all outlined there, but if you sing, you'll have to wear your mask. So there's a, a little trade-off there. Anyway, if anybody gets, finds themselves getting too warm in here, uh, if you go halfway down the hall to the office, the air conditioner is on in there. So if you find yourself uh, struggling with the heat, feel free to go down there and take a chill break. Okay. <laughs> Oh, Laurel, well, Laurel is here with me this morning. I am talking too fast, I think. I'm getting ahead of myself. Laurel is here this morning to serve as liturgist and co-host for this worship service. Dick James will be reading scripture. Sean Stafford and Chad Loudon are here to make beautiful music with their glorious gifts. And the tech team is back there making it happen today. We've got uh, Christopher and Ben and Nate and Carol and Bob, making sure the live stream goes well and that you all can see everything you need to see. I'm not sure who's hosting chat today. Is that you as well? It's me. Ew, Laurel's doing lots of things today. So we are here to worship together, though we may be apart, living God's love into the world from this place, from this worship, into this week. I do want to say a word first before we begin about um, some interesting conversations I've had this week about Sean's story he told last week. And uh, it's an interesting moment for particularly white folks to check our privilege and to examine the ways in which we hear stories and we hear things. Um, some folks assumed that the person he was talking about, the litter bug turned heroin dealer, was African American. And heard the story differently because of that, particularly when the police showed up in the story. Uh, some folks assumed it was a white person, and so you hear the story completely differently there. So there's, there's an excellent example of how we should Think about what we assume, particularly as white folks, what we assume about um, criminals, what we assume about um, drug dealers, what we assume about police, what we assume about what happens in a story with people of same or different races. So I just wanted to, to bring that forward. I've had a couple of those conversations that week, and I think um, it's, been a, it's been a really good opportunity to look at the way we hear things differently when race is involved. And because we did not know the race of the person in Sean's story, we heard it in some very different ways. So I just, I want to assure you the, the man was white. Um, I don't for a million years think John, Sean would have gone chasing someone down in the street um, who might have been African American. I don't know. I don't know how that would have worked. I know. So it's a, it's a thing to think about. Um, I think the story still is amazing. And uh, Sean, uh, getting heroin off the streets always a good thing. Uh, but I just wanted you all to know that some of those conversations have happened this week and um, that we should, we should be aware of our own, our own uh, assumptions and articulations of our understanding of race. So... Just wanted to say that before we begin our worship. Uh, will you lead us in prayer? Absolutely. Friends, will you pray with me? Oh God, we come before you asking you to fill us 
Fill us with faith, a faith of childlike simplicity and persuasive vitality. Fill us with hope, with a hope that never falters, because it is rooted in your permanence. Fill us with love, love for you whom we cannot see, love for loved ones and friends of whom we cannot see enough, love for the unlovely whom we pretend not to see. Bountiful God, fill us once again with faith, hope, and love that we may live to love and serve you, whose we are. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. And so we continue our worship together with music from Sean and Chad. We are not singing as a congregation yet, so if you are here in the sanctuary, we ask you to listen to the music as prayer. If you're in your living room, you do whatever brings you life. Find yourself in the melody and in the words, which will be on the screen. There were no words, so they will not be on the screen. So find yourself in the melody. Miss Sarah, what are you doing? Making s'mores. How come? I just said it was summertime. I hadn't had s'mores in a while. Thought it sounded good. Oh. Why did it make you think to come to church to do it, though? Well, I was thinking about it. And I was thinking that s'mores are a lot like faith. How? Well, first of all, they're messy. <laughs> True. Faith isn't very cut and dry. It's kind of a messy thing. Yep. Second, I was thinking everybody likes their s'mores a little bit differently. Just like everybody talks to God and interacts with God a little bit differently. That's true. Some people like their marshmallows lightly warmed. Yep. Some people prefer them a little golden. And then there are those people that really like them on fire. Right. 
B. Sorry. Like that. So I was thinking it's kind of like faith, so I decided I should make them at church. Okay. That sounds good. And th there are like ways you can kind of dress up faith a little bit differently or look at faith differently. Like you can with a s'more. Some people like regular old graham crackers. Mm -hmm. I'm one of those people. I am too. Some people like them with the fudge cookies. That would be good. And then there are people that I, I'm a classically mm -hmm. chocolate bar myself. Right. I don't know. Sometimes a little bit of peanut butter on there is good or a peanut butter cup or Ooh, thin mint cookies. Thin mints would probably be good. Then there's the marshmallow. I'm gonna put it together. They have different kinds of marshmallows too, right? They do have different kinds of marshmallows. So you could dress it up that way too. Yep. Um, but the biggest thing that I thought about faith that's similar to s'mores. What's that? Is we should share it. I like that idea. You know, s'mores are fine by yourself. Mm -hmm. they're, they're okay. Right. But they they're taste better. so much better and are so much sweeter. With other people. With other people. Sure. And it's kind of like faith like that. Yep. We're, we're not supposed to keep God's love to ourselves. We're supposed to share it. Right. So, but there are different ways that we could share it too, right? Yes. There are some people that do things, like they may come and help with Shepherd's Supper. Mm hmm Or they may sing in the choir. Some of the people that have been helping out cleaning, out, cleaning the church while Mr. Paul's been busy. Right. That's a way to help and show faith. There are other ways that you don't even have to be in the church building, right? Yep. Uh, doesn't, don't we do like we care Sundays or we used to where yeah, we, we would do. send cards to those people yep. that can't come to church. And now we, we do a lot of the outside of the building now because we talk to each other on email and yep. Zoom. And right through the church service and with those that service. aren't yep. here in person that yep. live across the country even. Yep. So we share faith in a lot of different ways. A little harder to share, share s'mores long distance though. Right. But these were shared with us. Mm -hmm. So we decided we should share s'mores like we share faith. Right. Because they are a little bit sweeter and a little bit better right. when you share. Come on over. Come on over. Grab a marshmallow. Do you remember who shared these with us? Who shared the ingredients? Who shared it? Who gave us the s'mores fixings? Do you remember? Was it Miss Donna and Mr. Ron? So those are people that share their faith and they shared s'mores with us. So we decided it would be a good idea to share our s'mores too. Why not? So remember, share your faith, have a s'more, have a good week. I just love them. I don't know what you all like on your s'mores. Are there any peanut butter people in the sanctuary who are like s'mores with peanut butter? I haven't tried it, but I've been told that it is on the list of things to do with our, I, I get a meh, it's okay. Thin mints may be on the list of things to try. I don't know about marshmallow with mint though, but I love how they just talked about sharing s'mores and it's a great season for it. So today is June 27th. Yesterday was my birthday. I am a spry mid 30s year old. Um, but a really important thing that happened this weekend was graduation. And so we have a few graduates. They, they are not with us in person. One of them is. I will not ask him to come forward, but they are with us in spirit. And so what I spent the last week doing was asking, we asked the church Facebook page. I asked a group of United Methodist clergywomen. I asked some recent graduates, what would you put inside of a care package for recent graduates? I got all sorts of answers. Um, everything from laundry bag, which we did put in there, because I think something cool about being made clean in Christ or something, or just don't smell. And I, we put in earplugs and um, a sleeping mask, sleep in heavenly peace. I, you got to have like the, the nerdy stuff to go along with it. And we, we added a couple of books. There is a pocket guide to prayer 
for Ordinary Radicals, which I think will be fun. And then there's a book called The Boy, the Mole, the Fox, and the Horse. I had never heard of this book. I will put the link if you want to buy it for yourself on the Weekly Century. But it's this beautiful book about a boy who goes along and meets these different creatures and talks to them about whether or not they're small or big or they, they will grow up and they want to be kind and the different things you can find in this world. It's totally a children's book. Um, but sometimes even when you're graduating high school or community college, it's worth it to go back a little bit and remember your childhood. So in the next week or so, all of those will come in the mail. There might also be a pair of socks that says, Jesus guacs my world. Oh my. Yeah. It has, it has avocados on it. Um, not to totally spoil the surprise for Chris back there in the tech booth. And so I'll post a picture of that on our Facebook page of all the fun things uh, we put in those packages. But there is one thing that is missing, and that is cards. This congregation, both near and far, is really, really, really good at cards. When I had my surgery, when mom had her surgeries, when things happen in families, you know, this congregation knows how to send cards. So in the next week, I'm going to ask you, if you have a minute, to send to this church office, uh, the address is up on the screen at the end of the service, a good luck card. And I have three names for you. I will put it in the weekly century as well. There is Chris T., that's his last initial. I won't tell you his full name. Ben M. And Rachel D. You don't have to remember them. If you're on the weekly email, I would send them to you. But what I need from you is to bury these beautiful children of God who are moving on to the next phase in their lives with cards, wishing them luck so that they can go back to them if they're staying in a dorm and feeling a little bit lonely or if you know, whatever the next phase of their lives looks like, um, if they are going to, to trade school, if they are moving to university from SUNY Broom. So we are really excited and proud of our graduates, of Ben, of Chris, and of Rachel. And so I ask that you help me shower them with cards, and I also ask that you give them a round of applause with me, congratulate them from graduating. Chris is in the back, so at the end of the service, we can embarrass him just a little bit. He won't come up, but like, just give him an air high five. <clears throat> this morning's scripture lesson is from the message translation. 2 Samuel, the sixth chapter, verses 1 to 5 and 12b through 19. David mustered the pick of the troops of Israel, 30 divisions of them. <clears throat> together, <clears throat> together with his soldiers, David headed for Bela to recover the Ark of God, which was called by the name God of <clears throat> the Angel Armies. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> who was enthroned over the pair of angels on the ark. They placed the ark of God on a brand new ox cart and removed it from Abinadab's house on the hill. Uzzah and Ahio, Abinadab's sons, were driving the new cart loaded with the ark of God, Ahio in the lead and Uzzah alongside the ark. David and the whole company of Israel were in the parade singing at the top of their lungs and playing mandolins, harps, tambourines, castanets, and cymbals. When they came to the threshing floor of Nakan, the oxen stumbled, so Uzzah reached out and grabbed the ark of God. God blazed in anger against Uzzah and struck him hard because he had profaned the ark. Uzzah died on the spot, right alongside the ark. It was reported to King David that God had prospered Obed-Edom and his entire household because of the Ark of God. So David thought, I'll get that blessing for myself, and went and brought up the Ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom to the city of David. 
celebrating extravagantly all the way with frequent sacrifices of choice bulls. David, ceremonially dressed in priest linen, danced with great abandon before God. The whole country was with him as he accompanied the ark of God with shouts and trumpet blast. But as the ark of God came into the city of David, Michelle, Saul's daughter, happened to be looking out a window. When she saw King David leaping and dancing before God, her heart filled with scorn. They brought the ark of God and set it in the middle of the tent pavilion that David had pitched for it. Then and there, David worshiped, offering burnt offerings and peace offerings. When David had completed the sacrifices of burnt and peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of God of the angel of armies and handed out to each person in the crowd, men and women alike, a loaf of bread, a date cake, and a raisin cake. Then everyone went home. <clears throat> well, once you get your raisin cake, you should go home, right? So the Ark that uh, is referred to here is the famous Ark of the Covenant. Some of you know it from reading the scriptures carefully through, and some of you know it from Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. However you've learned of it, this is that Ark. So when, <laughs> when was the last time you danced with abandon before God? Like that, maybe. Or like David in his underwear. Ready to go. You ready to go? All right. Has your faith ever led you to dance? Even a little bit. Most of us associate singing with faith, but when, when have most of us ever danced for faith? You may laugh a little bit. I heard some giggles. But it's really not that out of line for Methodists, did you know? You might not be able to tell that in any given United Methodist Church on any given Sunday. But John Wesley founded what would become the Methodist Church because the faith he had grown up with was too heady, too academic, too rote, too routine. For him, it lacked heart. What grew out of his conviction that God wants us to engage with our hearts and not our heads only was a movement that captured people's imagination and excitement <clears throat> and gave them a way to express their joy in God. Methodists became famous in the 19th century in America for their unbounded joy, their exuberant dancing at camp meeting revivals, their unbridled excitement at at expressing their faith. It was that excitement that exploded Methodism West with the population and made it the second largest denomination in the United States. I wonder how many times Wesley had read this story of David dancing. David's dance as he processes into Jerusalem with the Ark of the Covenant reminds us that worship isn't necessarily supposed to be formal and rigid. It's not supposed to be somber and boring. David is leaping and dancing before God with shouts and trumpet blasts because God has done mighty and powerful things for David and for the people of Israel. He doesn't care what he looks like, even if he's only wearing the, that priest's linen there, a linen overlay, is really basically not much at all. A uh, text sample says that this piece of clothing is called an ephod, and he calls this uh, David's ephod dance. He doesn't care what he looks like or how people perceive him as he leaps and dances in the street. He doesn't much care what people think at all. He is caught in the absolute spiritual and physical ecstasy of worshiping God. He's, faith, he's living proof that faith should be a journey leading to joy, not a guilt trip to destinations unknown. 
How many of us in this gathering, whether you're here in the sanctuary or watching on TV or the live stream, have at some point associated faith with guilt? If you're on the live stream, feel free to put that in there. Maybe a better question is to ask how many people not in this gathering associate faith with guilt, either from what someone told them or how they were raised or what they've read, and they've never been to church because of it. They're missing out on the joy part, the dancing in the streets joy that faith can be and should be. Not everyone approves of enthusiastic faith. You've got David's wife, Saul's daughter, Michal, scowling at his dance from a window. Not joining him, not down on the street watching, but scowling down from a window. It was very inappropriate, some would say. Organized religion has lots of scowlers today, too. Strangely enough, many of them are happen to be found in dying churches holding on only by a thread. Those churches tend to be full of scowling people. I'm sure there are no scowlers in this room, right? We're on this live stream today. Everybody's smiling to prove they're not a scowler, I promise. (laughs) The scowlers are the ones who say that church should be quiet and hymns should be slow and children should be dignified and that ritual should be observed with utmost solemnity and perfection. Well, if you ask me, I think we've organized and scowled the faith out of religion when we say things like that. We're embarrassed by emotion. We're embarrassed by imperfection, as David's wife was by his own. We're awkward around joy. but it's what we're created for, and who cares what anybody thinks about our expressing it? Can we get to that point in our own faith? Who cares what anybody thinks about how I love God and worship God and live that love in the world? Can we get to the point where we stop being awkward about joy and are living our faith with such unselfconscious joy that we're on fire with enthusiasm like the early Methodists? Most of you have heard me say it before, but in American Sign Language, the sign for Methodist is the same as the sign for enthusiasm. I was entranced when I found that out. Can we stop being awkward about being joyful in faith every day, every moment of every day? We're meant to be alive with joy, a light with the power and the passion and the purpose of the Holy Spirit, dancing in the streets, on fire for God. Most of us, on most days, settle for lukewarm. But you know, nobody's interested in lukewarm. Nobody's really attracted to mediocre. Nobody wants to participate in the hopelessly average. You can read it in the book of Revelation if you'd like to poke around in there a little bit about what God thinks about lukewarm churches and people too for that matter. There's a curse in Revelation on the lukewarm churches. Here at Central, we've been heating things up over the last few years. Some in response to COVID, some things in spite of it. We've grown some new things, we've revitalized others, we've restored others, and we're not anywhere near stopping this joyful journey of following where God's Spirit's leading us. Your leadership here has examined and experienced the spark of the Spirit glowing, and they're listening, and they're following, and it's exciting stuff. There's little fires of joy and ministry and power and Purpose springing up all over the place. Now, will that include dancing in the streets? Maybe not, but I'm not counting it out. I invite you all to dance to your cars today. What I do hope, though, even if we don't get to the dancing part, 
is that it will transform all of us into being so joyful about our, fight, our faith and our Christian life individually and as a community that people will come from miles around to be part of it. We might have to step out and take risks. We might have to accept that some people will disapprove and scowl at us for our enthusiasm. But that's not new. You read it here first. In spite of the disapproval of those closest to him, David leapt and danced in the streets anyway because he was joyful about what God had done and what God was doing and was going to do in his life and in the life of his people. There are folks all around us who cannot imagine a joyful faith. Mostly outside the church, but also lots inside the church. Bless their hearts. But scriptures like this one today tell us something really, really important. That God's wish is to bless us and that our response is meant to be joyful. There's a world right around us desperate to hear it, filled with people who are feeling lost or broken or forgotten or turned away. People who've lost sight of hope, who've never tasted joy, people who've been guilt-tripped by their religion to the point of submission. Can we risk enough to show our joy enough that it attracts people? Can we risk enough to show our joy to invite everyone in and call them family? Can we share enough of the joy we've been given that we can begin not only to feel restored ourselves, but that we can begin to heal hearts and restore lives of people we don't even know? Isn't that what we want church to be? I hope so. Is that what you'd like your church to be? Maybe I'm wrong. Okay, I see some nodding. <laughs> we, don't have to, we don't have to dance to do it. There's so many ways to live out that joy. What's important is being willing to find them. I know we can do that together. I know we can light up the world with our enthusiasm for being God's church together. Like Kara and Sarah, I do that every time. Carrie and Sarah were talking about it's best when it's shared. It takes a little bit of a journey to get there. But it's so much better than a guilt trip, isn't it? Anyway, that's my hope and prayer for us at Central in the months and years to come. Now that I know I'm here, definitely for another year, at least for the next year, that's my hope and prayer for us at Central. God's Spirit is here. It's lighting fires all over the place. I hope we can dance with joy at that because it's great good news. Thanks be to God for it. Amen. The more, uh... Pastor Michelle talks about the flames. I look at the dancing candles and how the light dances. I am thinking about uh, Mark Marino on the live stream talked about not preaching fire and brimstone today because it's so hot. And I was like, well, she still preached sermon about it heating up in here. <laughs> so, and so friends, just amen. And so before we enter our time of prayer, Sean and Chad are going to lead us with music. If you're feeling up for dancing, you are more than welcome Go to right do ahead. so. Um, maybe my, my kids in the living room are dancing. That's the way I want to dance, like my kids dance. Um, we invite you to offer prayer requests in the live stream chat, whether you're here in person or watching online. Um, where you have seen God this week? What has made your soul dance? What has brought you joy? 
And as we listen to the music, that will give you time to think and to pray. We might not be able to announce everything that comes from the comments, but we will do our very best. And then there will be time for congregational prayer as well. As we enter into a time of prayer, I wanted to start by lifting up the people in our prayer program. Each week, we go through our directory of members and we lift up specific people so that we make it through the directory in a year. If you hear a name that you recognize, by all means, reach out to them. If they are here today or if they are watching on the live stream, just know we are praying for you this week. And so we start by praying for John Bell, Larry Carmen, Don Cook, Lori Ferris, Donna Weber, Lynn Hackathorn, Cynthia Knight, Mary Bell Hurst, Amanda Schaefer, and Mary Bell Mitten. For those who are in the hospital or recovering at home, we lift our prayers for Lillian City, Millie Jones, and Shirley Panetti. And for family and friends with prayer needs this week, we lift up Jack Lair, Gladys Hansen, and Dave and Lynn Weston. Cindy Tedeschi is doing her own dance of happiness and joy that her mother is off hospice. And so her prayers, she gives thanks that her prayers have been answered. There are prayers lifted up for the beautiful music that is offered today. And we are so thankful for you both, Chad and Sean. We lift up prayers for Katie, uh, Maggie Wolford's roommate, 
They are celebrating the baptism of her niece, but her grandfather passed last night. Um, thankful for her prayers of protection, Marianne got to travel to North Carolina to see her granddaughter be the lead in a musical. And they were just super excited to be able to be a part of that. And Maggie Wolford gives thanks for prayers as she navigates her call to ministry. The fact that this family surrounds her and will continue to as she prepares to preach in the next couple of weeks. Yep. Um, and so as she prepares for her first sermon, she asks for your prayers. Uh, I've had questions. I had a little wrist surgery this week. It's okay. It's fine. <laughs> it's all good. A little surgery. A little surgery. Okay. Yeah. Um, also, uh, just an update on Lily and City. Um, she, they are to the point where they're waiting for a blood donor, blood marrow donor, donor and um, what she has to have now is two to three transfusions a week to keep her blood washed, as they say. So, um, prayers for them. They're trying to decide whether to do that at Binghamton or at Rochester. So that's, I haven't had any updates from that. Um, Loretta is still working with her family to um, um, process the passing of her father and also to um, put together a funeral for him. And Many of you have asked how you can help Loretta in this time of grief, and there is a need for help with funeral expenses. So if you want to talk to Loretta after the service, that would be great, or call the office this week, and um, we'll get you uh, the help you need for that, because that is, that's a huge cost. He had no life insurance. So uh, if you want to help Loretta, just speak with her, and uh, we'll keep you in our prayers and your whole family. Well... <clears throat> will you join me in prayer, whether you are here or on the live stream or on television? Will you stop just what you're doing for the moment? Let go of the lists in your head or the chores you're doing at home. Find yourself rooted where you are. Feel the presence of the chair or the pew or the couch solidly behind you. Stand if you like. Dance if you like. Let the silence fill you up. Holy and living God, you have created us for joy. Our capacity for joy is unimaginable, yet most of us haven't even tapped half of it. We say we love you, Lord. We say we believe in you and in all the work you do in this world. But we confess sometimes that that, that doesn't always bring us joy. We don't find joy in that. Maybe peace, maybe comfort, maybe, maybe a little guilt but joy. Joy is sometimes hard when we're grieving, when we see horrible things happen in this world, when we witness people being less than they can be, when we see people wasting the potential you've given them. Holy One, help us find joy again. Surprise us with it in unexpected moments. Flood us with it in our times of celebration. Help us know that joy comes from you. It is a great and glorious gift. Nothing to be awkward about. Nothing to hide under a bushel basket. Fill us with the strength and the courage to dance our lives in joy because of you. For many whom we've mentioned today, joy is a short commodity. And so for those we've lifted in prayer already, we ask that you touch them with joy, some measure of joy, wherever they can glimpse it. 
and we carry others with us who may be struggling with one thing or another, who may also be celebrating. May you shower joy on each one of them. Please hear us as we lift their names to you as we speak them aloud. We don't hear all those names as we sit together today or apart, but we know you hear each one. And so we ask it, Lord, in your love, hear our prayers. Yeah, prayers. For we ask each one in the name of Jesus the Christ as we offer to you the prayer he first taught us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will, will be done. done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. As we come to this morning's offering, I wanted to talk about the fact that offerings can look different sometimes. So as we, as we give our gifts in the, the back of the sanctuary, if you're here in person, or if you give online or on the app, this bag was mailed to me by one of our beautiful distance viewers from Saratoga Springs. And this is something that the missions team is coordinating, making these little produce bags. That's what they're called, but we're not really putting produce in them. We're making these bags to fill with travel-sized toiletries and to give to shelters in the area so that you can put whatever you need in there. It goes around your wrist like this. And we're going to bless them in Christmas in July on the 25th. Um, I think we're going to have a lot of these bags coming in, and we're collecting toiletries throughout the month. Um, starting next week, there will be a bucket in the back of the sanctuary, or you can send them or bring them to the church office. And later this week, we are tabling at a Fostering Pride event hosted by Berkshire Farms on June 30th from 5 to 8. You're welcome to join us. There will be an ice cream truck, I hear, um, at the Holiday Inn in Binghamton. Without your financial offerings, we wouldn't be able to do any of these things in the community. I mean, each one of us, sure, could make, you know, five or ten bags or could go to an event. But together, our offerings bring so much into this world. They bring the possibility for unique mission opportunities. Um, for Christmas in July, they bring opportunities to send love to foster kids and foster parents and foster families no matter what they look like. I mean, we have the room in the building where kids come every week, foster kids, to be able to work with therapists and, and workers. And so I just wanted to keep encouraging everyone to give. Give to the beautiful, joyful place that is central and all that it gives to the world and that you are all a part of it through giving of your monetary gifts, through sewing, through bringing in toiletries. It's just a beautiful community to be a part of. And so thank you for continuing to give. And so friends, may we pray a prayer of blessing over the offerings this morning. Provider God, we give back to you that which you freely give. Thank you for the joy that you place in our lives. Thank you for being there in times of sorrow. Thank you for bringing us together in person and online. Bless these gifts as we continue to do the, your work in this world. Amen. We would love if, uh, if you're on the live stream at all, um, or if you're not but on social media, we'd love if you would share the link for the YouTube live stream on your social media platforms. Share your experience of worship here at Central 
um, whether in person or at a distance, with your friends and family. I'm telling you, it's the easiest evangelizing you will ever do. Facebook made that so easy. Um, let people know what it means to you to be part of this congregation. Uh, there are lots of announcements uh, in the bulletin. I'm going to let Laurel cover those. But I do want, I want to ask, I'm just going to take a little poll of the people in the room, and if, you've, if you want to answer on the live stream, I'll get it after the service. But um, have you enjoyed this little tr- sermonic trip through biblical heroes but for adults. Have, w- do you like that? Would you like me to do some more this summer? Yes? No? Yeah. Okay. I just, I'm planning worship for the rest of the summer, and I thought I would ask the people invested in it um, what, you, what you think of that line. I, it, it occurred to me that it's been fun to do, and uh, it'd be fun to craft some other sermons around these other heroes we learned about in Sunday school and rarely talk about since. So, all righty then. So lots of things are happening at Central over the summer. Um, Just a reminder, if you haven't gotten your tickets for the garden tour yet, I heard there were a couple of answering machine messages, which is kind of cool, for the garden tour. Tickets are $20, but you get to learn about things from um, pollinator pathways and conservation to getting to see some really amazing gardens in the area. Um, The clothing center will be open the first Saturday in July. Um, I... There will be me and some other volunteers to be able to help from 9 to 1. Um, It is by appointment if you can call the church office. If you happen to not make an appointment, we won't turn you away. Um, But from 9 to 1 on the first Saturday in July is our open, you know, clothing center time for those who aren't available during the week. Um, The church office will be closed Monday, July 5th, just so that you all know. And the book study is continuing this week. There's no book study next week. Soul care continues. Um, and there are some really interesting events coming up. So if you are connected to the weekly century, um, you should see that tomorrow as well. If you're not, call the church office. Okay. Well, as we go from this time together synchronous or asynchronous, from this place or other places into this week and into this world. May, may you know the joy that is integral to the faith in God. May you know the joy that God plants in each of us. May you stretch the limits of joy in your own lives and may you share it with others. May the peace of the Christ go with you as you do. Amen. <clears throat>